Thank you. Well, good morning. Welcome to the joint um, committee meeting for Senate Finance and Assembly Ways and Means. Um, will you, uh, committee secretary, you please call the roll. Assemblywoman Benitez Thompson. Here. Assemblyman Frierson. Assemblywoman Gorlo. Here. Assemblyman Hafen. Here. Assemblywoman Hadegi. Here. Assemblyman Levitt. Here. Assemblywoman Miller. Here. Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. Here. Assemblywoman Peters. Here. Assemblyman Roberts. Here. Assemblywoman Titus. Here. Assemblywoman Tolls. Here. Assemblyman Watts. Here. Senator Canizaro. Here. Senator Dennis. Here. Senator Dondero Loop. Here. Senator Goikachia. Senator Hammond. Here. Senator Keekeffer. Senator Ratty. Here. Senator Severs Gansert. Here. Assemblywoman Carlton. I am here. Chair Brooks. I'm here. Thank you. So uh, I am going to, uh, I just want to go through some housekeeping stuff this morning. Members, please mute your, your microphones and leave your cameras on when you're present in the meeting. Uh, we'll have this time of the year, we have uh, several uh, members who might have to go um, to present bills or work session uh, their bills and come back and forth. Um, so please uh, um, keep the camera on while you're here so we can maintain a quorum. And um, I would also like to remind uh, the, the committee that there is a Teams set up for this particular meeting and I'm on it. And I apologize if uh, I, I don't monitor all the things going on. So that's a good way to get a hold of me or the old fashioned way. If you need to be recognized, raise your hand and, and feel free to, to jump in. Um, I also would like to remind the public that uh, the information for making public comment on this meeting um, and this meeting will have uh, public comment at the end of the agenda. There'll be an opportunity for public comment and on our agenda, is posted the information on how to um, uh, log in and how to uh, make public comment, or you go to the legislature's website and and you, there is a, a link there on how to get in and how to make public comment on committee meetings. So in uh, closings, we have our, our staff closing budgets, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, since we've ro done roll call, the staff closing um, or excuse me, the budget closing documents are, are going to be, are now posted on Nellis for the public and for the members. So this is where I will take a, a brief recess. Um, let's say five to 10 minutes. I'll check back in in five minutes, but we'll give the, the members 10 minutes to print, to download and print all of the closing documents so that you have them available uh, when we um, uh, are ready to start closing these budgets. So it's 8.10, I'll check back in 8.15. Um, and see if we have everybody. If not, um, we, we need to get going by, back again by 820. So please, uh, let's take a recess and while you uh, get your documents together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
we are Thank now. you, Vice Chair Carlton and committee. You are live to the broadcast and may reconvene whenever you're ready. Thank you very much, Mr. Barnett. Good morning, committee members. Chair Brooks had to step away momentarily. He asked me to take over, so we don't delay this morning. So with that, I will turn the reins over to Mr. Thorley to walk us through the first budget closing that we have this morning, the Office of the Governor. Thank you, Vice Chair Carlton, and good morning, everyone. For the record, Wayne Thorley, LCB Fiscal Analysis Division. Um, I will be going through the budgets for the governor's office. Uh, beginning on page three of your packet of the closing document is the first budget, which is the office of the governor budget 1000. Uh, committee members may recall from the budget hearing a couple months ago uh, that there were no major issues um, with this budget. Uh, after the budget hearing, a budget amendment was received. Uh, the explanation of the budget amendment begins on page four of the closing packet. Uh, very briefly, the, the budget amendment makes uh, various technical adjustments to make sure that all the costs in the governor's budget are accurately funded. The adjustments to the base budget, decision unit M300 and decision unit E670 ensure that personnel costs in the governor's budget are accurately funded for the 2021-23 biennium. I will call the committee's uh, attention to uh, decision unit E7, E670, which was not included in the uh, executive budget as submitted, um, but does make a small adjustment to the governor's salary to account for a um, cost of living increase that was approved by the 2019 legislature. Uh, committee members may recall that a similar adjustment was included in the budgets for other constitutional officers. The adjustment for decision unit E710 ensures that uh, computer equipment costs are accurately reflected. And the adjustment for decision unit E720 ensures that new equipment costs are also accurately reflected. Lastly, on page the top of page five, uh, the budget amendment adjusts the cost slightly related to the transfer, the recommended transfer of the Patient Protection Commission from the governor's office to the Aging and Disability Services Division. Uh, fiscal staff would note that um, the there is a recommendation in budget account uh, 3055 uh, to uh, also move to the other side of this request to receive the, the Patient Protection Commission. Um, and so uh, that, that budget will be heard at a later date. The table on page five of the closing packet summarizes the adjustments recommended by the budget amendment. Uh, at the bottom of the table, you'll note that the total uh, general fund request for the budget amendment totals 78,648 in FY22 and 85,388 in FY23. The question for the committees is, do the committees wish to approve decision units E710, E720, and E900, inclusive of the adjustments in budget amendment A21551100, as well as the adjustments in the budget amendment for salaries and benefits in the base budget and the governor's salary adjustment with the approval of decision unit E900, contingent upon approval of the transfer of the Patient Protection Commission and budget account 3055, or the passage of other enabling legislation, and with authority for fiscal staff to make technical adjustments as necessary. Thank you very much, Mr. Thorley. I will open it up for questions. First, I'll, I'll make a statement that as far as the Patient Protection Commission goes, there is there is a bill draft out there that addresses it. And I believe the final decision will be when we get to where it's proposed to be later on in those budgets. But there is a, there's other legislation out there that could possibly impact this. So we wanna leave our options open depending upon where all that legislation lands. So questions from any committee members at this time? Senator Kikepper. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think you and I share uh, some of the same concerns about um, having this be the destination of the Patient Protection Commission. So um, if we were to approve this decision unit, um, 
and say for some reason the bill um, does not proceed, the, the subsequent course of action would be to reject the decision unit in aging and disability services that brings it in, in which point it would, what, stay in the governor's office? I believe in that decision unit, and I don't want to put staff in an awkward position, so correct me if I'm wrong. In that decision unit, when we decide if it goes to ADSD, the, the committee could propose that it still go to the director's office. Um, so, but staff, if you want to make sure. Dorley, for the record, uh, to answer your question, Senator Keekeffer, yeah, the, the option that the committee would have uh, by, by approving this decision unit contingent on the passage of a similar decision unit in the ADSD budget or the enabling legislation leaves the options open for the committees uh, to make uh, changes to the proposed transfer structure. Ultimately, however, you are correct if, uh, if no approval is granted by the committees to transfer the Patient Protection Commission uh, from the governor's office, then it would simply remain in the governor's office. Okay, so if we wanted to put it in the director's office, it would need to either be done by um, a piece of legislation or within the director's office closing? Uh, Senator Keekeffer, that's correct. However, I, I will note that the the current recommendation in the executive budget is to uh, transfer the Patient Protection Commission to a new budget account in ADSD, so not, not the director's office. Uh, however, right. that would, however, that would be an option for the committee, though, to when the director's office closing is presented at the subcommittee level. Okay. I appreciate that. I'll, um, and I'll, I'll stop there on that decision unit, Madam Chair, um, knowing that I think we're of like mind on that issue. I'll just say again, because I say it, I think every session um, that I've been here that we could probably plug another quarter million dollars a year into this budget and it would still be underfunded. Um, and at some point, someone will try to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. It was, it was on a list, but that list ended up in the shredder at about March 18th of last year. So we play the cards were dealt. With that, committee members, are there any other questions? Seeing none, I don't see, let me double check my views. I don't see anyone else wishing to be recognized. So with that, um, Mr. Thorley had uh, stated the decision. I'd go ahead and accept a motion to approve from um, Ms. Benitez Thompson, a second from Senator Dennis. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, seeing none. Uh, if we could ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Assemblywoman Benitez Thompson. Yes. Assemblyman Frierson. Assemblywoman Gorlow. Yes. Assemblyman Hafen. Yes. Assemblywoman Hadegi. Yes. Assemblyman Levitt. Yes. Assemblywoman Miller. Yes. Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. Yes. Assemblywoman Peters. Yes. Assemblyman Roberts. Yes. Assemblywoman Titus. Yes. Assemblywoman Tolls. Yes. Assemblyman Watts. Yes. Senator Canizaro. Yes. Senator Dennis. Yes. Senator Dondero Loop. Yes. Senator Goykichia. Yes. Senator Hammond. Yes. Senator Keekeffer. Yes. Senator Raddy. Yes. Senator Severs Gansert. Yes. Vice Chair Colleton. Yes. Chair Brooks. 
Please mark Chair Brooks absent. And with that, the motion passes unanimously of all the members present. So, Mr. Thorley, I believe we can go on to, I think you're gonna do the next two together as uh, staff closes. So if you'd like to proceed. Thank you, Vice Chair Carlton. The next budget begins on page seven of your closing document. It's the Governor's Mansion Maintenance Budget, Budget Account 1001. This budget provides funding for the maintenance of the Governor's Mansion in Carson City. There are no major closing issues. On page eight, you'll see uh, there are two other, uh, other closing items, uh, both related to replacement equipment. And I will pause if, if there's any questions on this budget before uh, moving on to the other, but the, the remaining budget. So committee members, are there any questions on this particular budget? It's nice to see this budget without a whole lot of repairs that need to be done. We've done a lot of work on this building over the years. So it's nice to see that this time around. Doesn't need a paint job this session. So that's a good thing. Seeing no questions, Mr. Thorley, you wanna go ahead and move to the next one? Thank you, Vice Chair Carlton. The last budget for the governor's office uh, begins on page nine of your closing packet. It's the governor's Washington office, uh, budget account 1011. This budget funds the contract uh, for the, um, the group that advocates uh, on behalf of the state of Nevada uh, in Washington, DC. There are no major closing issues or other closing items uh, in this budget. Okay. Committee members. Oh, Chair Brooks is back. Uh, so Chair Brooks, we're on the governor's Washington office and we were just opening it up to questions to the committee members. So I'll give the virtual gavel back to you. Thank you, Vice Chair Carlton. I appreciate that. Are there any questions on this uh, budget? Mr. Chair. Uh, please, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Thorley. I and I'm just maybe I'm, I'm blanking on what we did um, last session on this budget. But can you tell me why the work program for the current year jumped so dramatically over 20, year 20, and then that's being carried for, carried forward? I just don't. Did they had a position. Uh, Senator Key Keffer, Wayne Thorley, for the record, LCB uh, Fiscal Analysis Division. There are no uh, positions uh, associated with this budget. The, the entire funding in this budget is for the contract with Cassidy and Associates. Uh, it's $252,000 a year. The, uh, a new contract was uh, signed last biennium, or I guess in the current biennium, uh, to move to the, the, the new vendor, uh, Cassidy and Associates. So that's what uh, the change in the cost is related to. Thank you. Any other questions on this budget? All right, seeing none, I think you can move on. Mr. Right. Oh, excuse me, is that Assemblywoman Titus? Yeah, I apologize, uh, Mr. Chair. So we're actually, the contract jumped um, $100,000, 52% um, negotiation on, on a contract with a, a lobbyist. That seems like a pretty big, um, pretty big lift without any explanation on why we would accept that kind of an increase uh, of, of taxpayers' dollars. Uh, Wayne Thorley for the record, uh, uh, Assemblywoman Titus. The the contract was did was presented to the State Board of Examiners and, and went through the normal contact uh, contract process uh, and was approved by, by the, the BOE. Um, I, I would have to go back and, and check uh, with the minutes from that meeting to see what discussion, if any, took place regarding the, the contract amount. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other questions on this budget, so um, I think you can uh, proceed, Mr. Thorley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
On page 11 of the closing packet is a summary page for the two staff closed budgets, the governor's maintenance, uh, mansion maintenance and the governor's Washington office. Uh, fiscal staff recommends that both budgets, uh, budget account 1001 and 1011, be closed as recommended by the governor and request authority uh, for staff to make other technical adjustments as necessary. Thank you, Mr. Thurley. Any questions on uh, that recommendation? Seeing none. Um, I, I would move to approve, uh, Chairman. Uh, I have a motion to approve from Vice Chair Carlton. Second. And I have a second from, I think, Senator Dondera Lou. Any discussion on that motion? Mr. Uh, Assemblywoman Titus. Mr. Chair, although I do support the Governor uh, Mansion uh, component of this, they need some new vacuums, and I certainly understand that. I will not be. I cannot support the uh, paying of a lobbyist an additional hundred thousand um, dollars over the 2019-20 when we're trying to look at lowering expenses. Everybody else was asked to decrease the budget in this budget item by 12 percent, yet we've dramatically escalated this lobbyist reimbursement. So I will be a no, um, fortunately, if they're tied together in one vote. Any other discussion on that motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, since I made uh, the motion. Yes, Vice Chair Carlton. And, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I don't think it's it's fair to characterize this as simply a lobbyist. This is our voice in Washington, D.C. And as we've seen over the last four years with the previous administration, we really needed to have a voice there to make sure that Nevadans uh, had their issues brought to the front. I mean, we have nuclear waste, transportation, gaming. Our biggest industry needs to have that resource in Washington, D.C. So I don't think it's uh, quite uh, fair to, to categorize it as a lobbyist. Uh, I know the trips that I've made back to Washington, D.C., these folks have been very helpful in helping me navigate the system and be able to visit with our delegation and members of other, other delegations to address issues that are really important to my constituents. So that's why I support it. And I'm fine with the two staying together and moving forward. Thank you. These are staff closes. And if someone had had an issue with it at the beginning of the session, um, they could have asked for it to be pulled from staff close and we could have had a hearing on it. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Carlton. And I can't uh, uh, reiterate uh, enough what your statement about how important it has been to have federal or representation in the federal government in, in Washington, D.C. over the last uh, couple of years um, when we look at the CARES Act and the CARES funding and, and, and Nevada fighting for their fair share of that money to help Nevadans as well as what's going on with ARP. I uh, am very grateful that we have representation in Washington. And I imagine the scope of their work has increased dramatically over the last year and a half uh, as a result of the, the pandemic and the federal response to the pandemic. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm very supportive of that and, and willing to, to um, definitely support both of those budget items together. Any further um, discussion on the motion? Assemblyman Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In, 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 in full disclosure, when this uh, item was presented earlier, I had no idea it was a lobbying contract. I thought it was an office maintained in DC, but yeah, it'd be great to have some additional information on uh, what drove the increase. Uh, I understand that uh, you know things do go up. I'll still support this measure moving forward, but it'd be great to have the back uh, backstory on it at some point. Thank you, Assemblyman. Uh, Senator Dondero Lou. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair. I, I guess the other thing that I would notice in the overview is that it was authorized by the 1985 legislature. So this isn't something that's just new in the last even 10 years. And um, I would note that probably these costs have gone up and we um, have a lot of grants that benefit the rural and the urban districts. Um, we spend a lot of time um, getting dollars for a small state. Um, those other states that are located back there are very fortunate and 
may be able to handle this differently, but I just think this is an important expense um, for the state of Nevada when the legislature is uh, not in session uh, every year. And also um, Washington DC is so far from our state. But uh, once again, I would like to note that this was authorized by the 1985 legislature. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator. Any, uh, we have a, a motion and a second uh, to, to approve these two staff closed budgets. Do I have any further comments on that motion? Mr. Chairman. Senator Kehover. Thank you. I, I, I'll just say that, I, you know, I know that um, it's a pretty significant jump and it, I just, it, it struck me that it was so sizable. I know the firm that's been retained is, um, you know, highly skilled and well um, positioned to probably work with the um, with the new administration. Um, and that's probably really important as we go through this process. So um, it's expensive, but lobbying on the Hill is expensive. So um, I will, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, thank you Senator. Um, uh, any other dis question or discussion on the motion? Seeing no more discussion, uh, will you take a roll call vote, please? Assemblywoman Benitez Thompson. Yes. Assemblyman Frierson. Assemblywoman Gorlow. Yes. Assemblyman Hafen. Yes. Assemblywoman Hadegi. Yes. Assemblyman Levitt. Yes. Assemblywoman Miller. Yes. Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. Yes. Assemblywoman Peters. Yes. Assemblyman Roberts. Yes. Assemblywoman Titus. No. Assemblywoman Tolls. Yes. Assemblyman Watts. Yes. Senator Canizaro. Yes. Senator Dennis. Yes. Senator Dondero Loop. Yes. Senator Goikichia. Yes. Senator Hammond. Yes. Senator Kikaffer. Yes. Senator Ratty. Yes. Senator Severs Gansert. Yes. Assemblyman Carlton. Yes. Chair Brooks. Yes. And so that motion passes um, and we can move on to our next agenda item, which is the office of Lieutenant Governor. And uh, Mr. Thorley, will you present the closing recommendation for the Lieutenant Governor's office? Certainly, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. Again, Wayne Thorley for the record, LCB Fiscal Analysis Division. The Governor's Office Budget, Budget Account 1020, begins on page 13 of your closing packet. There are no major closing issues in this budget. On page 14 of your closing document at the top, uh, you'll notice there are two other closing items, one related to a restoration and travel funding uh, to pre-pandemic levels. And then the second, uh, other, the second closing item uh, relates to an adjustment for the Lieutenant Governor's salary uh, consistent with the other adjustments uh, the committees have made. Fiscal staff recommends other closing item one be closed as recommended by the Governor. And other closing item two be closed with the noted technical adjustment uh, for the Lieutenant Governor's salary in FY 2023. And staff requests authority to make other technical adjustments as necessary. Thank you, Mr. Thorley. Uh, any questions on this budget? I do not see any questions on this budget. So uh, I would uh, entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Couldn't find Second. the mute button, sorry. <laughs> Second. Uh, so I have a motion from uh, uh, Vice Chair Carlton um, and a second to, to approve the recommendation 
um, and a, a second from, I believe, Senator Dennis. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing no discussion, uh, we can take a vote. Assemblywoman Benitez Thompson. Yes. Assemblyman Frierson. Assemblywoman Gorlo. Yes. Assemblyman Hafen. Yes. Assemblywoman Hadegi. Yes. Assemblyman Levitt. Yes. Assemblywoman Miller. Yes. Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. Yes. Assemblywoman Peters. Yes. Assemblyman Roberts. Yes. Assemblywoman Titus. Yes. Assemblywoman Tolls. Yes. Assemblyman Watts. Yes. Senator Canizaro. Yes. Senator Dennis. Yes. Senator Dondero Loop. Yes. Senator Goikachia. Yes. Senator Hammond. Yes. Senator Keekeffer. Yes. Senator Raddy. Senator Severs Gansert. Yes. Assemblywoman Carlton. Yes. Chair Brooks. Yes. And that motion passes. Um, and that brings us to our last uh, budget of the day. That is the uh, Department of Sentencing Policy. Uh, Mr. Speed, will you please uh, quote, uh, present the recommendations for the Department of Sentencing Policy, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Justice Fiscal Analysis Division, for the record. Uh, this morning, I'll be going over the budget for the Department of Sentencing Policy, but on 1010, which starts on page 15. The Department of Sentencing Policy is a new department created in the 2019 legislature through the passage of Assembly Bill 80. The department is responsible for the support of the Nevada Sentencing Commission. Uh, there is one major issue, which is the position reclassification, uh, decision unit E805. Um, the governor recommends general fund appropriations of $7,987 in FY22 and $7,102 in FY23 to fund the reclassification of one vacant administrative assistant position uh, to a management analyst position commensurate with the additional duties required of the position as approved by the Sentencing Commission at its July 29th, 2020 meeting. Uh, according to the department, additional assistance is required with fiscal monitoring and analysis, operational and procedural planning, policy review, research of bills, and statistical and financial reporting, as well as data collection, fiscal management of the department, uh, aligning with the governor's strategic priorities for an efficient, responsive state government. Pursuant to NRS 17601343, the department is required to collect and assess data from the Division of Parole and Probation, the Nevada Department of Corrections, and the Records, Communications, and Compliance Division. The governor recommends the reclassification of an administrative assistant to a management analyst and according to the executive director's presentation at the July 29, 2020 Sentencing Commission meeting, the reclassification would provide the support needed to manage the fiscal activities independently and the collection of data required by Assembly Bill 236 that would that was approved during the 2019 legislative session. During the February 5th, 2021 budget hearing, the agency testified that the work duties outlined for the management analyst position were being completed by the director and the staff attorney. The agency indicated the position reclassification would provide the expertise needed regarding data analysis, and the management analyst position would be would help produce more sophisticated reports and organize the information into worksheets and databases. Shifting some of the duties currently performed by the director and the staff attorney would allow time for the, these, those positions to perform other duties. The, do the committees wish to approve general fund appropriations of $7,987 in FY2020 and $7,102 in FY2023 for the reclassification of a vacant administrative assistant position to a management analyst position commensurate with the duties required of the position. 
Thank you, Mr. Speed. Uh, do any of the committee members have any questions on this budget that uh, we just heard? I am not, oh, oh there we go, Senator Sievers Gansert, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, I just have a question on the, the um, there was a substantial reversion in 1920, and then the work program's going from 438 roughly to over 500,000. And so that's a lot more than just the reclassification. So I just wanted to get a little more information on the, the increase um, and then the reversions, if the reversions are typical, at, you know, at a level of 200 or so thousand dollars, although I know it's relatively new. Thank you. Um, Dustin Speed, Fiscal Analysis Division. Uh, the budget rever reversions in uh, FY20 were, were uh, quite large due to the fact that um, it took a while to hire staff for the department, and they were only they only had uh, one staff member for a good portion of uh, that fiscal year, which allowed them to revert a large portion of the, their funding back uh, back during the uh, budget reductions in FY20. And then additionally, they were still holding positions open and were not fully staffed um, when the decision was made for budget reductions in FY 2021. Um, the reductions in 20 totaled to about 220,000 and it's just shy of 100,000 in FY21. Um, does that answer your question, Senator? Um, thank you. So, so it sounds like we're expecting them to be fully staffed up this, and that the expenditures will be closer to a half, half million, $500,000 a year based on what's been presented. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speed. A uh, any other questions on this budget? Apologies, I've got a lot of lot of lot of windows I'm looking at here. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Um, well, with no other questions on that, um, I'd be uh, entertain a motion. Uh, if you would, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve general fund appropriations. Of seven thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven dollars in fiscal year twenty-two and seven thousand one hundred two dollars in fiscal year twenty-three for the reclassification of a vacant administrative assistant position to a management analyst position commensurate with the duties required of the position and also uh, under other closing items uh, recommended by the governor give staff authority to make any other technical adjustments as necessary. Second. I have a motion uh, on both of those items and a second, a motion from Vice Chair Carlton, a second from Senator Dennis. Any discussion on those motions? Seeing none, will you please take the vote? Assemblywoman Benitez Thompson. Yes. Assemblyman Frierson. Assemblywoman Gorlo. Yes. Assemblyman Hafen. Yes. Assemblywoman Hadagi. Yes. Assemblyman Levitt. Yes. Assemblywoman Miller. Yes. Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. Yes. Assemblywoman Peters. Yes. Assemblyman Roberts. Yes. Assemblywoman Titus. Yes. Assemblywoman Tolls. Yes. Assemblyman Watts. Yes. Senator Canizaro. Yes. Senator Dennis. Yes. Senator Dondero Loop. Yes. Senator Goikichia. Yes. Senator Hammond. Yes. Senator Kikeffer. Senator Raddy. Yes. Senator Severs Gansert. Yes. Assemblywoman Carlton. Yes. Chair Brooks. Yes. We have that motion carry, so uh, I appreciate that. Well, that was our last budget agenda, and which moves us on to our final agenda item, which is public comment. Uh, broadcast services, will you please open the public comment line and queue up the first caller? And 
Thank you so much, Chair Brooks. The public line is open and working. However, there are no callers at this time. And we will, because of a, a slight delay and, and the broadcast, we'll wait just a minute and see if anyone jumps on. Certainly, thank you, Chair. Broadcast standing by. Thank you, Chair Brooks. The public line is still open and working and there are no callers at this time. Thank you. Well, that brings our meeting to an end and I'd, I'd like to adjourn this meeting, uh, this morning's meeting of uh, uh, the Joint Finance and Ways and Means Committee. Have a wonderful morning.